I know, I know. I'm just a retired school teacher, so who am I to question the positions of highly qualified scientists who also happen to be climate deniers? Well, as circumstances would have it, I do seem to have a unique skill set uh, that lends itself rather well to identifying and debunking climate disinformation and to educating the public about that disinformation. In a way, I've never really stopped teaching. As it happens, I'm currently developing a series of videos uh, debunking a number of claims that Dr. Richard Lindzen, for example, makes. Now, Dr. Lindzen is clearly more qualified to provide opinions about climate change than I am. However, that does not mean at all that Dr. Lindzen chooses to use his qualifications responsibly. In fact, Dr. Lindzen single-handedly inspired me to petition the Canadian government to criminalize the act of knowingly and intentionally disseminating climate misinformation. I'll uh, leave a link to that petition in the video description. Now as just uh, one example of the type of behavior that I believe should be prohibited by law, I, uh, I highlight Dr. Lindzen's video that was published and uh, promoted by so-called PragerU in the United States. Link in the video description. Now, despite its name, PragerU is not a university, nor is it uh, any form of academic institution. It does not hold classes, it does not grant certifications or diplomas, and it is not accredited by any recognized body. Huh? Rather, the uh, institution that goes by the name PragerU is a right-wing think tank that was founded in 2009 by conservative radio talk show host Dennis Prager in order to advocate for conservative views and to offset what Prager regards as the uh, undermining of college education by the left. In his video, uh, Dr. Richard Lindzen claims that average global temperatures are not increasing. In order to substantiate that claim, Dr. Lindzen shows a graph of a 19-year period between 1997 and 2016. Dr. Lindzen does not identify the source of the data depicted in his graph, but Rosh Salgado Darcy uh, of the YouTube channel All About Climate fact-checked the graph and matched it to a dataset produced by the RSS satellite from a point in time before a calibration error was identified and corrected. I'll leave links to both Rosh's video and an article about that satellite error in the video description. Not only did the erroneous RSS satellite dataset represent a market departure from all other datasets tracking long-term changes to the Earth's surface temperature, but this somewhat glaring departure was caused by an error that was corrected in 2017. As it turns out, once the error was corrected, the same satellite's data actually shows an increase in average surface temperature that is slightly greater than the increases found by other measurement tools deployed on the planet's surface. The fact that Dr. Lindzen chose to illustrate this one outlier dataset, which was not only erroneous but has since been corrected, highly suggests that Dr. Lindzen intentionally selected erroneous data to argue that climate change is a hoax. Paradoxically, it would appear that it is Dr. Lindzen's own climate denial supported by erroneous data and promoted by a phony university that is, in fact, a hoax. As another example of Dr. Lindzen's disinformation, I would highlight the fact that in a 2023 interview with Dr. Jordan Peterson, Dr. Lindzen said this about Dr. John Cook's 2013 study establishing a 97% consensus among climate scientists on the issue of anthropogenic global warming. Take a listen. There are some studies, like one by a man called Cook, that were just bogus. Uh, they, you know, ended up looking at 50 papers, specially selected, and found, you know, this percentage. You heard him. It only looked at 50 papers. That's what he said. 
Ended up looking at 50 papers, 50 papers. In reality, that study looked at 11,944 papers. 11,944. 50. I mean, I guess I could, I could see how those two numbers could, could get mixed up. Another oft-cited climate denier is Dr. William Happer. Truth be told, Dr. Happer is not a climate scientist, but he did manage to publish one paper on climate change titled Climate Science and Policy, Making the Connection. Upon further investigation, one finds that this paper, which is actually described as a report, was published by the now defunct George C. Marshall Institute and not by a peer-reviewed journal. It also appears that this paper has been almost completely scrubbed from the internet. The only copy I could find is a poor quality photocopy that is posted on SlideShare. It has accumulated 635 views and two likes over the past 15 years. I'll leave a link in the video description. If you are at all interested in further exploring the nature of Dr. William Happer's disinformation, I would invite you to watch this video that I made about a year ago. Suffice to say that in 2015, Dr. William Happer was caught agreeing to accept payment for the construction of a contrived scientific paper during an undercover operation conducted by Greenpeace. I'll leave a link in the video description. At the end of the day, all anyone really needs in order to get to the bottom of the alleged controversy around the issue of climate change is the ability to research, to understand what they are reading, to think critically, and to ask the right questions. The more you do that, the more you will find that all roads lead to the same place. An $800 million a year oil-funded disinformation campaign. If you'd like to learn more about that campaign, take a look at the research of Dr. Robert Brule of Drexel University. I'll leave a link in the video description. So, if the government is going to allow oil companies to fund the production and dissemination of really dangerous climate disinformation to the public, then my advice to anyone is to go ahead and listen to any climate denier you might like, but listen very carefully. Listen in particular for any quantitative, objective, concrete claims that a climate denier makes, as opposed to when they are simply presenting their opinion or their perspective. Any concrete claims you hear are pure gold because those claims are easy to fact check. When a climate denier tells you, for example, that average global temperatures are actually falling, and then you check on that claim, only to find that the denier cherry-picked two particular dates, starting with a high temperature date and ending with a low temperature date, a strategy known as going down the up escalator, you quickly realize that these fellows have turned their backs on science and have opted, for some reason, to become con artists. I cannot speak to their motivations. I'm Art Lightstone, your green neighbor, asking you to take good care.